Did you notice the spelling mistake in the thumbnail? Did you notice the spelling mistake in the title of this video? I actually did those on purpose. It's very easy to get so engrossed in a message or in the logic or in the details of what you're reading or looking at or studying that you miss something big. This is why we have editors, why we have people that uh, read our books, read our articles, and, and proofread speeches before they're given to find these small errors that can be dramatic and uh, could cause problems. So I think you're gonna like this video. I'm really excited about making it. I have permission uh, from an individual to make this video. It's a case study of Jack and Jill. Those are not the real names but I do have approval. These are true facts, fictional names. Okay, Jack is 56, Jill is 54. They plan to retire at the end of this year. Congratulations to them. They've got a lot of things in line. Jack is a big data guy, literally. Jack, in advance of our discussion, gave me 96 pages of analysis. Three uh, Technical reports from newretirement.com, a software package that I uh, love on retirement, very detailed. Uh, there's a link below, but it does Monte Carlo simulations, gives you suggestions. You put in all your data. It, it looks at uh, Medicare cost, looks at Social Security timing, recommends Roth. I mean, it is very, very good. Well, he did an optimistic, a base plan, and a pessimistic plan. Plus, he gave me a spreadsheet in, of his expenses. Uh, plus, he gave me just his thought process in another sheet. I have 96 pages that I've prepped for our call with. I loved it. It was a challenge. Uh, Jack is a brilliant guy. I loved, loved talking with him. Now, in his analysis, in this plan, his input, um, he was very conservative. I'll say very conservative. You know, first of all, he has no debt. I'm going through my list here. Uh, his expenses, uh, his and wife uh, were $7,500 uh, a month. Very nice pensions, three pensions, a military pension, a VA pension, and a TSP um, with COLA adjustments, cost of living adjustments, you know, so they uh, just, just fantastic. Savings of $600,000, uh, estimated 2 to 5% returns on those investments. Uh, those are investments that where they need money in over 10 years. Uh, just very conservative, great low cost index funds. You know, I was struggling to find something wrong with this plan. They had increased spending up till uh, their death at 90 years old. Uh, so just right on, you know, up uh, with inflation. Uh, they wanted to leave a $600,000 legacy to their two boys. They had a home paid off and they had a rental home paid off. And this analysis didn't include um, $850 per month profit after all expenses, including maintenance, uh, from that rental um, uh, property. Long-term care was funded through savings and had inflation factored in. Uh, I think they have three to 4% is, is what was factored in. So really just tried to put a worst case lean on all this. Uh, even so, inside a new retirement, he had a 97% probability of success. So fantastic. Just 97 with all this. It's a lot of upside from here. Jack is a subscriber of mine. You know, uh, we, uh, he's left a lot of uh, comments and a few email, but uh, he chose to set up a call with me through my phone a friend link uh, that I have below. Uh, he knows I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not giving financial adv advice, but... Uh, he doesn't have a retirement group. He needed to talk to a friend, say, hey, Joe, what do you think of this? You're retired. Folks, uh, Jack got it 99% right, uh, but he missed something pretty big. What was it? Pause this video and leave a comment. Be honest, leave a comment, and this will help the community see what things that you may have missed or you're, you've caught, somebody caught for you, uh, let, let's get those out there to get people thinking uh, about putting the, these factors that you list into their plan. So be really honest. This will help the community. Pause the video and do that. What was the problem? 
the pensions were all jacks and they had a 50% survivor spouse, 25% and 0% survivor spouse. Okay. So when you go into new retirement software and change Jack's death timing from 90 to 65, as an example, very early death, and those pensions are just slashed, the probability of success went from 97% to the lowest rating, which is less than 15% probability of success. Jack was devastated when I told him this. We were working through it. He typed it in like, oh my gosh, I thought I was in great shape. I was being conservative. And oh my gosh, that's the worst thing in the world is to set my wife like that up like that. Uh, he ran other scenarios of different times of death of him and his wife. But this early death of Jack was the killer. So what did we do about it? So this story has a happy ending. I was able to ask Jack some questions challenge some assumptions, some of his numbers, not giving him specific financial advice, but saying, think about this. What about this? Could you do this? So Jack was completing his plan with a few questions for me, challenging some of his assumptions and numbers and, and you know, just making sure he was exposed to levers that he could pull. So uh, I've got seven of them here I want to go through. Um, number one, you know, uh, both Jack and Jill had life insurance. Uh, so, hey, what if you increase your life insurance? And Jill, since the pensions weren't in her name, uh, you know, the life insurance really wasn't needed for her. So let's increase Jack's. And, and um, Jack is playing around with that number. What does he need to increase that to? What's the premium? There's different things that he's looking into there. Number two, their rental house. Hey, if Jack dies early, whether it's 62, 63, whatever, you know, uh, this is really Jack's project too. So, hey, sell the house and then you got that windfall of dollars. Delay Jack's Social Security to 70. This maximizes Jill's uh, surviving spouse benefit. Um, number four, is uh, the investment returns, um, I believe we're like 2% uh, pessimistic, 5% optimistic. Those are pretty low below, before inflation, especially for your long-term assets. Let's get something a little more reasonable in there. Still on the lower side of history, but 5 to 7%. Uh, number five, um, they had their spending the $7,500 per month increasing all the way until their death. Well, in reality, somewhere around 80, that's going to level off. So let's flatten that out. Because, um, you are you know, this his <laughs> evidence says that your spending drops down. Uh, number six, they had a legacy, if you remember, of they wanted to leave $600,000 uh, to their children, that along with their two houses. Uh, so that's part of the plan. So let's take that down to zero because we, we may not be able to do that under our worst case Jack dies early plan uh, from a financial standpoint. Number seven, uh, long-term care. Instead of paying for that out of the savings, let's pay for that out of the home. Jill's going to be in this home. And if she needs long-term care and she's outside the home, she you know, you can only live in one place if she has to go someplace where most of the expenses are, or she can take out a reverse mortgage if she's uh, in the home. So, but somehow finance that out of the home. Really, this th none of these are ideal, but it's like, okay, how do we give uh, Jill instructions uh, with from a plan that's thought out in advance by Jack? Okay, so that's what we attempted to do there. Now, this is still being tweaked. Uh, actually, number five is not in there yet. The expenses of a little bit more life insurance not in there. But we went from 97% with diet 90, just great, great plan, down to less than 15%, which is the lowest rating new retirement gives you, probability of success, just the lowest they give you. With these simple tweaks, we are at 90% percent probability of success. I think that number is going to go up 93, 94 with these checks in advance. And, you know, Jack has a plan, you know, um, and like I said, once he gets that plan, review it with Jill. So she knows what actions to do, put that with your will, put that with your, uh, 
you know, important documents uh, in the safe. It's not important to have a perfect plan, but you can't miss some big items, folks. Uh, you know, lots of do-it-yourselfers out there on in the YouTube world. I'm a do-it-yourself person, but I do have a retirement group that I run things by. I do have a financial advisor that is unpaid by me. You know, we've talked about that before. He he gets paid out of the expense ratio of a couple funds because of the the uh, uh, a threshold of money that I have. Uh, so I do not pay a financial advisor to go through and create a complicated plan for me. Uh, I'm a DIYer uh, myself, but you need to educate yourself. You need to think about how do you prevent things uh, from being missing in your plan. I don't recommend going that alone. So you can uh, have a retirement group. Talk about it with your spouse, somebody just like reading, a, uh, uh, editing a book or editing an article. Have somebody else look at that. I think it's very cost effective to have a friend do that, but you got to have the right friend um, to do that. It's it's really too big to, and important to go it alone, and you could miss something massive like Jack did. I, I'm not trying to uh, – Jack is – God, man – uh, most people aren't in anywhere close to the level of detail Jack had, but he didn't think through the scenario of what if he died earlier because he has a lot of his assets in his pensions. This is Joe out.